Hello and welcome to another video where today we're inside and I'm doing some indoor macro photography. I've got a light box, a uh, big 20 inch cube with an LED array in it and you can see I can adjust the uh, dim or brightness on it. I've got my Giotus uh, tripod with this wonderful articulating centre column. We're using household items such as this uh, little tea strainer sieve thing, a fork and I suppose typically things you're going to find in your kitchen. I've got my coffee, which is really very important, and uh, I've got my LED lights currently in the Ukrainian colours. Fuck you, Putin. And no flash, literally no flash. We're using the light box. We're going to use these. I do have some other lights, which I might use when I'm not too sure. But the point is that <clears throat> avoiding flash uh, avoids one of the really big costs of macro photography because the flashes aren't cheap let's face it these little things are 20 30 pounds each so not a great deal of money there's links down below in the description for all of the kit i'm using the other important thing i'm using is a uh, remote trigger to avoid any vibration because obviously at macro level vibration is so so obvious and because i'm not using flash i've got to use uh, longer exposures not, I mean, not long exposures, but longer exposures, which are going to be more and more prone to uh, vibration because there just isn't that much light. It might look very bright, but the truth is there isn't a great deal of light. So this is where using uh, things like these still life objects are, are great because once you put them down, they don't move. So you can get away with longer exposures. So stick around and um, let's see how we get on and hopefully you'll get some ideas how you can do some indoor macro yourself and one of the other important things to point out is actually you don't need a lot of space either this is a very small room it's about eight foot that way and about 11 foot that way and i'm just using this small area here with this light box on it and i mean in truth you could use an even smaller area if you so chose to do so. Now this might look crazy, <clears throat> but if you've never tried macro before, one of the things you need to appreciate is that the depth of field is incredibly thin. So even at these close quarters, you're not going to see the detail in the areas that you're not focusing on. I am focus stacking here and I'm letting the camera do this. I'm not gonna do any post-production. And the Olympus uh, OM-1, Mark II, III, and everything above, uh, I think also the OM-5s, it will focus stack in the body itself. It will take a number of shots uh, and then combine everything and spit out a focus stacked JPEG. I'm just gonna leave this to the camera to the, for the moment because it's, it, it's simpler uh, for me. But if you wish to do this in post-production, then of course you can. Now I'm going to pour this screen out so I can see it a bit better without having to kind of look and peer in. I'm going to just reposition That's better. So it's a really simple setup. I've got a blue light there, a yellow light underneath. The yellow light is not very strong, so I'm picking up mostly blue here. But just little tinges of yellow are picking up on the sieve. F11 it's a sixth of a second, so it's not very fast at all, so I've got to make sure there's no wobble here, and fire, and that was about 15 shots there. It's busy in the camera, nearly there. Let's have a, a butcher's at what that comes out like. It's rather nice. It's rather nice. <laughs> When you're in at such a really tight focus, a really close focus, position of everything really matters. And I advise you to move it where you can, the object, rather than the camera. I'm just gonna increase the intensity of this, uh, this light here, because it was only on 2%. I'm gonna stick it up to 20, so we get some real kind of yellow out of it. Not sure there's a, there's a spot, <laughs> this is one of the, the, the curious things, there's a, a huge spot that's appeared on the screen of the camera that's on the light, but on the light of course it's such a tiny, tiny thing that I couldn't, 
can't see it on the camera. It's massive. Here we go. Now, of course, these are very abstract. It's art, if you like, and a great deal of experimentation. Yeah, there's nothing to say that this is how you do it or how you're not going to do it. Really, all I'm giving you here, I think, is some ideas. And, of course, bigging up the Olympus OM series of cameras because <laughs> they, are, they are simply brilliant at this. Oh, and uh, don't forget, uh, up here somewhere beyond this camera, there's a, a link to uh, some woodland macro that I've done uh, in the past. Uh, and uh, I think you might find that useful again using these lights. That's a good shot. I, I like that. It's got a reasonable depth to it because of the focus stacking. So yeah, have a look at that one, see what you think. <laughs> pleased with these. I don't know how much more I can kind of do with it. If we turn it around, oh, oh, that's nice. That's a genuinely interesting shot. If you didn't know what it was, you would kind of look at it and think, oh, that's interesting. And I'm conscious that I'm moving the table, which moves everything else. So I'm going to kind of pull back. I think what I've got on here also is a watermark. Well, it might be a fracture in the sieve. It's difficult to tell. <sighs> Try and polish that, put it back under the camera and see what it looks like. I've got that mark off. There's a real abstract beauty to that shot. It's, it's very, very nice. The lighting really makes it. Yeah, I don't know how long I could play with this and get such different views of it. Where do we put this blue light just to get that rim? That rim there's nice. It's a case of holding lights, changing angles of things. It's nice. It's nice. How about, how about we change the angle to, to there? Got a couple of streaks on it still. I think they're, I think that's actual markings now in the stainless imperfections. I like the shot. I like the shot, but I think it's time for a different object. So bear with me while I go and fetch something else from the kitchen. So I've come back with a grater, a couple of forks, one which I've had to wash up, dry this one up. Of course, the forks we fully expect to have a number of imperfections on them because it's you know it gets heavily used. Yeah, that's just oh 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 literally nothing on this is in focus, and it's very very abstract. We're just really just playing with light, and I'm gonna well I'm gonna fire this. Oh my God, that's wonderful, that's lovely. I mean, that's the kind of image I'm getting, although better depth of field out of it. Um, yeah, I think that's gorgeous. I'm gonna shoot that again. It's lovely, I love that shot. Ah, uh, that just, Complete accident, I just put the thing, you saw me, I put it down and what I saw in the back of, of the camera, that screen on the back of the camera, I just lit my face up uh, and uh, yeah, I love that. I could see that printed and just on a wall, just a wonderful abstract shot. Let me know what you think. <laughs> I hope that these images have given you some ideas for how you can do some of this work at home for not a great deal of cost. Yes, okay, so I've got a macro lens, uh, but uh, you don't need a macro lens for this. A lot of lenses will focus down you know, to within a foot or so. And yeah, if you've got a decent camera, then if you need to, you can crop in and uh, get similar images. It's all about being a bit abstract in this respect. Yeah, I'm not trying to do insects or anything else. It's, yeah, staying at home, 
having a bit of a, uh, a play with your camera with a few things that you've already got. If you need to go and buy some of these LED lights, I can assure you they are brilliant. Uh, links down below for them. Uh, link for uh, the light box as well. You won't regret buying these things, they're brilliant. I've been using this light box quite a lot over the last few days for a lot of B-roll and such. And yeah, uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's awesome and it folds flat to absolutely nothing. Anyway, hope the images are pleasing to you. Please let me know in the comments down below. Click the like button. It's so important you click the like button because it tells YouTube that what does it tell you? It tells YouTube that you like the video. Um, so yeah, please, it really does help because it, YouTube will push the video out to more and more people. And if you want more of this kind of content, please let me know down below, subscribe, and we will see you soon. And here's those images again.